So it's, oh, amen. Praise God, praise Jesus Christ. Only one way to heaven, only one way to escape death. Only one way to not go to hellfire. Only one way to live happy. Only one way to live with peace in your life. Only one day, only one way to enjoy life. Only Jesus Christ, only one way. John 14, 6, Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one comes to the Father except through me. Only Jesus Christ, not Satan, not Buddha, not Muhammad, not the pedophile Muhammad, guys. Only Jesus Christ. Not the fat, lazy Buddha either. It's time you get in the kingdom of God. It's time you get born again. Jesus says you must be born again. Jesus Christ says you must be born again. Jesus says you must be born again. If you're a homosexual and you think you were born that way, good for you. Jesus says you must be born again. You homos are anyone special. If you were born homosexual, that's why Jesus says you must be, I don't even know what you said, but it's time you repent. If you were born homosexual, that's why Jesus says you must be born again. Only one way to heaven, guys. Repent or hellfire. Jesus Christ or hellfire for eternity. You're not going to want to burn in hell for eternity, guys. Hell is not going to be fun. Jesus says there's going to be a weeping and gnashing of teeth. Do you want to burn in hell for eternity? You're not going to like hell, and guess what? You're also not going to like heaven if you're not living holy. There's going to be people like me in heaven. Holy people, righteous people. There's going to be people like me and my brother Darren in heaven. We're going to be, we're holy and righteous, and if you don't like living holy for God, you're not going to like heaven either, but guess what? Guess what? Hell is going to be so much worse and by the time you're in hellfire, you're going to wish you had gotten born again and started living holy. You're not going to like heaven, but if you end up in hellfire, you're going to wish you had repented. You're going to wish you had heard the word repent one last time. You're going to wish you had gotten right with God, but you chose to stay in your filthy, disgusting, sinful lifestyle full of pornography and lust. Jesus says that if you look at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery. Amen. God bless you. Jesus says if you look at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery in the heart. Are you looking at women with lust, you perverts? Are you going to the gym and taking a look at those females? Also, ladies, you, amen, praise God. You need to start dressing modestly. No more dressing like a whore. No more dressing like a porn star. It's time you, t it's time you start to dress like a woman of God. It's time, you, it's time you get born again. It's time you obey the God of the Bible, Jesus Christ. Only one way to heaven, guys. Only one way to heaven, Jesus Christ. Only one light, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is free for you. The Holy Spirit is free for you. All you have to do is repent and believe in Jesus Christ. All you have to do is repent and believe in Jesus Christ. And then you're going to be led to serve God. You're, you're not going to be led to sit around as billions of people go to hell. You're not going to be led to watch Netflix all day. You're not going to want to sit around and watch Netflix all day. You're going to be led to serve the God of the Bible, Jesus Christ. 
faith without works is dead. Just because you claim to be a Christian doesn't mean you're not headed to hell. Most people that claim to be Christian are going to be burning right next to you, filthy sinners. You need to get born again. You need to become a priest of God. You need to get born again. Born again. Born again spiritually. You need to get a new heart with new desires to not sin against God. You need to gain a righteous heart. No more serving Satan, guys. Satan hates you. Why do you want to keep on serving the devil? The devil hates you, and you're going to be burning in hell with them if you continue to sin against God. The Bible says, go and sin no more. Amen. God bless you. Jesus Christ says, go and sin no more. To the whore at the well. To the whore at the well, Jesus said, excuse me. This whore that Jesus spoke to was in uh, adultery. Adultery is when you have sex with someone that you're not married to. Jesus said, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Just because you claim to be Christian doesn't mean you're a true Christian. Titus 1.16, they confess to know God, but by their works they're abominable or reprobate. No more having sex before marriage. No more homo sex. Amen. No more homo sex. No more anal sex. No more oral sex. It's time you get married to the opposite sex and start to put God first. It's time you start to have biblical, godly sex. No more being a pervert, guys. It's time you get off Instagram and Pornhub. Amen. God bless you. It's time you delete Pornhub off your phone and download the Bible app instead. It's time you delete Netflix and get the Bible app on your phone. It's free. It doesn't cost you a dime. It's time you delete Pornhub off your phone and get the Bible app and read and obey it. It's not that hard to get a Bible, guys. You don't have to be a biology major to understand the Bible. It's pretty straightforward and simple. There's not much to it, guys. Heaven or hellfire. Obey, obey Jesus or hellfire. There's not much to it, guys. Obey Jesus Christ or hellfire. You either get born again, or you burn in hell for eternity. You guys need to read the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, Noah's Ark. If you think this is judgmental, you need to read the story about Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh boy, was there a lot of homosexuals and sodomites in Sodom and Gomorrah. All right, some of you guys might not know what sodomite means. A sodomite is someone that has anal sex, anal penetration. That's what a sodomite is, guys. That's why it was called Sodom and Gomorrah. Just like how Jesus destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh yeah, he's going to destroy them. Guys, Sodom and Gomorrah was just a small city. This time, Jesus Christ is going to destroy the whole world. If you thought Sodom and Gomorrah was bad, you just wait for the second coming of Jesus Christ. If you thought Sodom and Gomorrah was judgmental and hateful, you just wait for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Revelation 19, 11 says that Jesus Christ judges and he makes war. The God of the Bible judges and he makes war. Are you in spiritual warfare? Are you fighting the devil actively? Or are you sinning and sleeping with the devil? Are you sleeping with a witch? 
What are you doing with your life? Everything that you've been doing is vanity. Vanity, vanity, vanity. All this work you've been doing in your job is going to lead to nothing. You do realize you're going to die someday, right? Amen. You do realize you're going to die someday, right? Stop being a moron. No wonder you atheists like video games so much, because you have to make up your imagination. No wonder we have so many perverts that are video gamers, because you have to make up your own imagination. What are you doing with your life, people? You're going to die someday. Everything is vanity except serving God. Amen. All this work you've been doing, all this work that you've been storing up, all this money you've been storing up is going to lead to nothing. Everything that you're doing is going to lead to hellfire unless you sir, start serving Jesus Christ. Only Jesus Christ. Only one way to heaven. Only one way to, ha to have a happy life. Most of you guys are depressed. God has given you up to your wicked desires. God has given you up to your wicked deeds. You're under a strong delusion. Most of you guys don't even know what love is. You guys don't even know what love is. Second John 1 John 1.6 says that this is love that we walk according to His commandments. 1 John 3.18 says don't, don't love in word or word or speech, love in deed and in truth. You can say, oh, I love God, oh, love, love, love. Just because you say the word love with your mouth doesn't mean you know what love is. Love is obeying God. Preaching the truth. That's why 2 Timothy 4.2 says, Preach the word of God in season and out of season. Rebuke, extort with all long suffering. That's why preaching the word is love, because God commands us to do it. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love God, you're going to keep his commandments and stop sinning. Nowhere in the Bible does it say you keep on sinning. Nowhere in the Bible does it say you keep on sinning. Hebrews 10 says that if you keep on sinning, there remains no sacrifice. Hebrews 10 says that if you keep on sinning, there remains no sacrifice. Only one way to heaven, guys. Only Jesus Christ. Only Jesus Christ. If you're living miserable, you have a miserable life, Jesus can fix it. If you have wounds that need healing, if you're living a life of sin, if you have herpes or STDs, If you have herpes or STDs, it's because you sinned against God. Guess what? There's consequences for your sin. There's consequences for your sin. Keep on having that homo sex. Guess what? You're going to get herpes, and uh, if you don't end up getting herpes, you're just going to burn in hell. That's bad enough, guys. Why do you want to burn in hell fire for eternity? Doesn't make any sense. Jesus says this is a wicked and adulterous generation. Jesus Christ says that this is a wicked and adulterous generation. So much ungodly sex, it makes me sick. God is angry at the wicked every day. There's school shootings happening left and right. There's people getting raped in the open, and you're doing nothing about it. All you're doing is staying at home supporting it. 
There's people getting raped. Kids getting killed. And you're doing nothing about it. All you're doing is staying at home, watching porno and Netflix. There's people getting raped and killed and you're doing nothing about it. Billions of people going to hell and you're doing nothing about it. Because you don't care, you're a hateful person, you're not of God, you love the things of this world. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Jesus is God. Jesus Christ is God and he, re he requires a lamb without spot and blemish. Jesus Christ is God. He is the God of the Bible. He will save your soul if you let him. It's not up to God, guys. It's not up to God, it's up to you. It's not up to God. It's not going to be God's fault if you end up in hellfire, and it's not going to be mine either. It's not going to be my fault if you end up in hell fire. Neither is it going to be God's. Obey the God of the Bible, people. It's time you turn away from sin. It's time you get right with God. It's time you live holy. Jesus says, be holy for I am holy. I'm younger than most of you people here. I'm younger than most of you people in your cars and I'm smarter than you. You guys are twice the age of me and I'm smarter than most of you people. It's disgusting. Some of you guys are about to die of age. Have you given your life up to Jesus Christ? Some of you people are getting old. Have you given your life up to Jesus Christ? Some of you people are about to die by the coronavirus because of your age. Have you given up your life to Jesus Christ yet? Everyone's gonna die someday. Everyone's gonna die someday. I might die today, but praise God, if I die, I'm gonna be in heaven. Each one of us is gonna die in this fleshly body someday. But your soul remains forever. Your soul remains forever. And it's either going to go to heaven or hell. It's not going to go to Disneyland. Your soul isn't going to go to Disneyland when you die. It's going to go to heaven or hell fire for eternity. It's time you know the God of the Bible, people, Jesus Christ. God does not love everyone. God hates all workers of iniquity. God does not love your sin. God hates your sin with a burning passion. That's why there's going to be fire in hell. Because God hates your sin with a burning passion. God says, do not love evil. God says, those that love the Lord hate evil. Those that love the Lord hate evil. Only one way, only one way, guys. You heard it here. You guys have your warning. What? I don't know what you're saying. The, the, the truth is... Amen, amen. Praise God, yes. Amen, guys. Jesus won. Jesus already won. It's written in his, in his word. It's prophecy, guys. You want to know how, the Bible, how we know the Bible is true? Because of prophecy. 
Read the Old Testament, guys. The prophets have foretold the future and a lot of it's already come to pass. That's, how, that's one way we know that the Bible is true, prophecy. And guess what? There are some prophecies that have not come to pass yet. The book of Revelation. The book of Revelation. The book of Revelation, guys. Read it. Obey it. Make it your life. God is the Word, John 1.1, 1, 1, Jesus Christ is the Word, read it, obey it, make it your life, James 1.22 says that we need to be doers of the Word, not hearers only, if you're just a hearer of the Word, you're headed to hell fire. You have to be a doer of the word. Turn up. Come on, put on Christian music. You don't need to be listening to that filth. Come on. Come on, guys. I know you turned down your music so you can hear me. Now when you turn your music back on, put on Christian music instead. Amen. God bless you. I know you guys turned down your music so that you can hear what I'm saying. So when you turn it back on, put on some Christian music instead. No more listening to music about sex, drugs, and alcohol. Why do you want to praise things that are, that are going to send you to hell? Why do you want to keep on pleasing Satan? Satan hates you. Satan hates you, and guess what? God is willing to change your soul. God is willing to change your soul if you let him. Jesus Christ is willing to change your soul if you let him. Only one way to heaven. Only one way to live life peacefully by serving Jesus Christ guys don't be surprised if you have sex before marriage and that relationship doesn't end up working out you choose to disobey God you choose to go against God's commandments guess what there's consequences the Bible says whatever a man sows he shall reap you want to have homo sex well then guess what? You're private. <laughs> Guys, painful. The Bible says homosexuals are abusers of themselves. Stop abusing yourself, guys. Stop abusing your body. Why do you take pleasure in the abuse of your body? It's probably, first of all, it's probably because you have a demon inside of you. And then second of all, no question about it, it's because you don't have the Holy Spirit. You need to gain the Holy Spirit. You need to gain the heart and mindset of Jesus Christ. You need to start rebuking the wicked. Proverbs 24, 25 says, Blessed is he who rebukes the wicked a good blessing shall come upon him. How's it going? You want to know why I enjoy rebuking the wicked so much? It's because God blesses me. You know Jesus Christ? Okay. Obey God, guys. Obey Jesus Christ. You want to know why I enjoy rebuking the, the wicked deeds that you guys do? First of all, the Bible tells me to do it. Second of all, it's because that God has blessed me more than you can imagine. God has blessed me more than you can imagine. Here to tell you today, guys, that once you start serving God, you're not going to want to turn back. You're not going to want to turn back once you start serving God. 
It's so addicting, guys. That's the one addiction you need to have. If you're not addicted to serving God, you're headed to hell. The Bible says that His commandments are not burdensome. Serving God is not something that uh, it's hard for you to do once you're born again Christian. Guys, serving God is the best thing ever. If you just go to church on Sunday and you don't even like that, you're headed to hellfire. Titus 1.16 They confess to know God, but by their works, they're abominable, they're a reprobate, most people that confess to know God, they're in their sin. 1 John 3.6 says, uh, Amen, God bless you. 1 John 3.6 says that whoever knows God does not sin. Then 1 John 3.7-3.9 says, Whoever sins is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. That's, what, that's just what the Bible says, guys. I didn't go in there and write it in the middle of the night. I didn't go into your Bibles. I didn't go into your house, guys, and write in your word in the Bible. It says it there, guys. 1 John 3, 6. Whoever sins is not of God and has neither seen him nor known him. If you, con if you continue to sin... You never truly knew God. You got to turn away from sin. Willful sinning. Willful sinning. True Christians don't look forward to sinning. True Christians don't plan on sinning. True Christians don't plan on masturbating the night tonight. They don't plan on sinning. True Christians don't plan on having a party with other sinners. The Bible says, what place does righteousness have with unrighteousness? Why are you hanging out with those sinners? Why aren't you preaching to them the truth? Why aren't you telling them about the Bible? Why aren't you telling them the truth? The truth is what sets people free. The truth is love. The truth is love. If you really love someone, you're going to tell them the truth. If you really love your friends, you're going to tell them the truth. And who cares if they don't accept you? They didn't accept Jesus. Amen. Oh. <laughs> Who cares if you get persecuted? Stop being such a wimp. Stop being such a coward. Stop being such a big baby. The Bible says, the Bible says this. A servant is not greater than his master. They didn't accept Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God himself, why do you think that they're going to accept you? They didn't accept Jesus Christ. They didn't accept Jesus Christ. What makes you think they're going to accept you? The Bible says whoever desires to live a godly lifestyle shall be persecuted. Whoever desires to live a godly lifestyle with Jesus Christ shall be persecuted. No more sinning, guys. The Bible says, awake to righteousness and sin not. For those of, for those of you who have knowledge of God, I speak this to your shame. 1 Corinthians 15.34 1st Corinthians 15 34 Awake to righteousness and sin not
Awake to righteousness and sin not. Awake to righteousness and sin not. Fake Christians, fake hypocritical, lukewarm Christianity. That's what most of you guys are. Revelation 3.16 says that if you're neither hot nor cold, God is going to spit you out. The, Jesus says, do not have partiality when it, ser when it comes to serving me. You guys are so double-minded, you don't even know who your father is. What's it going to be? Is your father Satan or God? Which one is it? 1 John 2.15 says, Love not the world, nor the things in this world. Whoever loves this world, the love of the Father is not in him. That's just what the Bible says, guys. I didn't write it in your Bible. It's been there since before I was born. 1 John 2.15 Love not the world, nor the things in this world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Love not the world, nor the things in this world. Whoever loves this world, the love of the Father is not in him. The love of the Father is not in you guys. You guys would rather stay at home and watch YouTube. You people are sick. You would rather home and watch Minecraft videos while people are getting raped and sent to hell. You people would rather stay at home and watch Netflix while people are raped, killed, murdered, stolen, sent to hell, than to go out and serve God. The Bible says faith without works is dead. The Bible says we need to be a doer of the word, not a hearer only, James 1.22. Guess what? Guess what, guys? The Pharisees study the Bible more than most of you, more than more than us, and they didn't even recognize Jesus. What makes you think that you're going to recognize the Antichrist if you're never reading the Bible? What makes you think you're going to recognize the mark of the beast when you only go to church once a year? God bless you. What makes you think you're not going to recognize What makes you think you're going to recognize the mark of the beast if you're never reading the word? Jesus says, "Go and sin no more to the whore at the well who is in adultery." I wouldn't be surprised if a bunch of you guys were in adultery right now. No, guys, sleeping with someone else who is not your wife is not fun. It leads to death, destruction, and consequences. Doing drugs does not lead to a good time. Drinking alcohol does not lead to a good time. No wonder you are so angry at us. It's because you're serving the devil. It's time you start to get angry at sin, guys. The Bible says, be angry and sin not. The Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Are you angry at sin? Are you angry at the wicked like God is? God is angry at the wicked every day. I didn't just make that up, guys. That's what the Bible says. It's time you let go of that, ba that vape cigarette. It's time you start taking care of your body. 
No more smoking that cigarette, guys. You're killing yourself. The devil has to leave his mark somehow. Want to know how to get off of cigarettes? You gain the Holy Spirit. Want to know how to get off of drugs? You gain the Holy Spirit. You want to know how to get off of pornography? You gain the Holy Spirit. Want to know how to get off of homo sex? You gain the Holy Spirit. Want to know how to stop being a gamer addicted to video games? You gain the Holy Spirit. You want to know how to get fit and stop being lazy and overweight? You gain the Holy Spirit. You want to know how to stop being prideful about your body? You want to know how to stop wearing makeup and caring about what people think about you? You want to know how to stop caring about what people think about you? You gain the Holy Spirit. Want to know how to start living happily? You gain the Holy Spirit. Want to know how to gain the Holy Spirit? You repent and put your trust in Jesus Christ. Mark 1.15, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Want to know how to start living happily? Want to know how to gain a godly wife? Want to know how to gain a godly husband? You gain the Holy Spirit. Want to know how to turn from sin? You gain the Holy Spirit. Want to know how to love on your kids and your friends and your family? You gain the Holy Spirit. Want to know how to serve God and make it to heaven? You gain the Holy Spirit by getting born again. Jesus Christ says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Unless the man is born again, he shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Unless a man is born again, he shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I'm literally smarter than most of you people here. You guys are twice, three times, four times the age of me, and I have more wisdom than you guys do. Shame on you. Shame on you for serving the devil this long. Shame on you for not obeying all the preachers that God has sent you. Shame on you for not listening to the voice of God now and in the past. I'm, I'm literally younger than most of you people and I have more wisdom, more boldness, more courage than most of you people here. I wouldn't be surprised if it was all of you people. Most of you people are cowards and you don't love anyone except yourself. I have more wisdom, knowledge from you because I serve God. You want to know the wisest man who ever lived, Solomon? You want to know how he got wise? You want to know how Solomon got wise and smart? It wasn't by biology textbooks. Solomon, the wisest man in the earth that ever lived, didn't get smart by going to college. He didn't get smart by going to Bible college. He got smart by seeking God and hearing his voice. Solomon, the wisest man, a man of God, David's son, the son of David, Solomon, and then later, then later Jesus Christ, a descendant of David, Solomon, David's son, didn't get smart by watching YouTube all day. He didn't get smart by sinning against God. Solomon got smart because he listened to God's word, his voice, 
He read the law, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Yes, Solomon read the law, guys, and he strived to obey it. He feared God. Solomon didn't get smart by going to Bible college. He got smart by having a fear of the Lord. Do you want to say anything, brother? Solomon got smart by having a fear of the Lord. Me and my brothers and sisters, we are smart because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. God bless you. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 1.7 The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Guys, homo sex is so bad that it's talked about in the first chapter of the first letter written to the churches, Romans 1. Amen. Homo sex is so bad and wicked and such an abomination to God that it's talked about in the first letter and in the first chapter of that letter, Romans 1. God gave men and women up to their wicked desires, woman with woman, man with men. Homosexuals don't have it off the hook. They're headed to hellfire. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 says, Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, adulterers, homosexuals, blasphemers, liars, Stealers shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You heard it from God, guys. I'm not just making this stuff up. I'm not just making this stuff up, guys. You heard it from God himself. You heard it from God himself. You heard it from Jesus Christ himself. God is the word. John 1.1, 1, 1, the Word was God and the Word was with God. Jesus Christ was the Word in the flesh. So you, if you actually obey John 3.16, you're not going to be led to just believe in John 3.16. You're going to be led to obey the whole Word. Amen. God bless you. You're going to be led to obey the whole Word of God. You're going to be led to read and obey it and believe it. True Christians don't cherry pick. Guess what? If you, if you choose to cherry pick the Bible and hear only what, your, what tickles your ears, if you listen to Joel Osteen or Joyce Myers, you just cherry pick the Bible you just hear what you want to hear. All you quote is John 3.16. You're going to hell fire. Revelation 22. The last chapter in the Bible says whoever removes the words from this book or adds to them, I will add to them all the plagues written in this book. If you cherry pick the Bible, God is going to add to you all the plagues written in His Word. Jesus Christ doesn't change, guys. Just like how God was destroying sinners in the Old Testament, just like how God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, He's going to destroy this world at his second coming. Just like how God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, he's gonna destroy this world at his second coming. 
Jesus Christ doesn't change, guys. That's what the New Testament says. And guess what? Jesus has been there in the beginning, since before you and I were created. Since before God made grass and animals and sea animals. Jesus was in the beginning, so was the Word. Jesus Christ was in the beginning, so was the Word, so was God, so was the Holy Spirit. God, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, the Son, the Father, and the Holy Spirit, and the Word were in the beginning. Hallelujah! Jesus Christ is God! Hallelujah! Jesus Christ is going to remain forever! You can't change God, guys! You think you're smarter than God? Hate to break it to you, but you're a fool! You're deceived! You're under a strong delusion! You care more about your sin than you do God. You don't care about God or anyone else. All you care about is your sin. You don't even love your neighbor. If you really loved your boyfriend, if you really loved your girlfriend, then trust me, you would save the sex till after marriage. If you really loved that partner, you would save the sex for after you get married. If you really loved your homosexual partner, you wouldn't be having homo sex with them. That's just what the Bible says, guys. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's what Jesus says in the book of John. If you love me, keep my commandments. Narrow is the way to heaven. I wouldn't be surprised if me and my brother here were the only ones that made it to heaven out of this large crowd of people. I wouldn't be surprised if the rapture happened right now and me and my brother were the only ones taken up. If the rapture happened, or if you died, would you go to heaven? If the rapture happened right now, if the rapture happened, would you be sent to heaven? Would God take you up? Or maybe he won't because you're lukewarm. Most of you people claim to be Christian most of you people think you're a Christian. Most of you people claim to be Christian, but you don't even read the Word of God. The only thing you read is John 3.16. That's the only thing you read. Jose 4.6 says that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Most of you people are going to be sent to hell because you have a lack of knowledge of what the Word of God says. You decide to watch Netflix instead of read the Bible. You decide to get drunk. You decide to spend so much time in school that you don't read the Bible. Who cares if you get a major in biology? Who cares if you get a bachelor's degree. If you die without Jesus Christ, you're gonna be sent to hell. Who cares if you make $10,000 a month? 
If you die without Jesus Christ, you're going to be sent to hell fire. All is vanity except serving God. If you're not serving God, your work is going to lead to nothing. You did all this work thinking that something special was eventually going to happen. You did all this storing up for your children thinking that something special is going to happen. But if you're serving Buddha or Allah or Muhammad, all of the money is going to go to waste. You've been serving God, praise God. Your work is gonna be for the Lord. Amen, amen, God bless you. If you've been serving God, praise God, your, your work is gonna add up to something. All liars, amen, God bless you, God bless you, brother. All liars, thieves, stealers, shall have their part in the lake of fire. Why don't you want to go to heaven? Why don't you want to repent? Why don't you want to get born again? Why don't you want to put your trust in Jesus Christ? It's not God that's being unloving. It's you that's being unloving. You're the one that's being unloving. It's not God that's not being unloving, it's you. You've been deciding to sin against God your whole life. No wonder your kids have turned out the way they've turned out. No wonder your kids are now having sex outside of marriage. It's because you sowed sin your whole life You've brought in generational curses. You didn't get healing. You didn't get healing before you had kids. You brought in generational curses to the family. No wonder your kids have turned out the way they've turned out. You decided not to get delit to not You decided not to get delivered from those demons. No wonder your kids are the way they are. You need to serve God. The Bible says this is the first and greatest commandment to love God with all thy mind, heart, soul, and strength. The second greatest commandment is to love thy neighbor. Do you want to know how to love your neighbor? You start preaching the truth. You start telling them that they're in danger if they don't have Jesus Christ. You start telling your neighbor that they're head. Amen. God bless you. You start telling your neighbor. You start telling your neighbor about Jesus Christ. You want to know how? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus, 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 people. You want to know how to obey the second commandment? It's by obeying the first commandment. Because if you obey the first commandment, which is to love God with all thy mind, heart, soul, and strength, you want to know how to obey the second greatest commandment? It's by obeying the first and greatest one, which is to love thy God with all thy mind, heart, soul, and strength. Because if you love God, that means you love the Word. And if you love the Word, that means that you know that the Word says to preach. That means that you know that the Word says to preach the Word of God in season and out of season. If you love your neighbor, you're going to preach to them. Nowhere in the Bible does it say to worry about what people think. 
Nowhere does Jesus say, oh, make sure you don't be, turn people away. Who cares? They were headed to hell anyways. If your neighbor doesn't like what you have to say, who cares? They were headed to hellfire anyways. That's why Ezekiel 33, 4 says, whoever hears the voice of the trumpet, but does not take heed, the blood shall be upon his own head. It's not gonna be my fault, or Darren's fault, or God's fault, or that preacher's fault, if you end up in hellfire. I know I'm pretty bold doing this, guys, but just because I'm bold doesn't mean it was me that sent you to hell. It was yourself. You keep on deciding to not follow God. You keep on deciding not to keep His commandments. You keep on deciding to hate God. You keep on deciding to hate your neighbor. Proverbs 27.5 says that open rebuke is better than love carefully concealed. Open rebuke. Open rebuke is better than love carefully concealed. If you love your neighbor, you've got to rebuke them. Sometimes there's different ways You've got to start obeying the Bible if you love your neighbor. Jesus, the, guys, the Bible says, those who sin openly, rebuke in the presence of them all that they all may fear God. I do this because the Bible tells me to. If this is hateful to you, then good. I'm glad you got the memo. If this preaching is hateful to you, I'm glad you got the memo. It is hateful. It's hateful against sin. It's hateful against your lifestyle. If you don't like this preaching, praise God, I accomplished what I came out here to do. If you're mad at this preaching, praise God, I accomplished what I came out here to do. Jesus says, that they hated me because I testified against their wicked deeds. Guys, if you didn't like it when Jesus did it, you're definitely not going to like it when his servant does it. If you didn't like it when Jesus Christ did it, you're definitely not going to like it when I do it. Or when other servants do it. You guys are Pharisees. You think you understand the Bible, you read it, but you don't even understand it. You don't even see Jesus. I'm not the Pharisee. You're the Pharisee. You read the Word, you think you know the Word like the Pharisees did. The Pharisees didn't even recognize Jesus and they read it. You read the word, you don't even obey it. You're a Pharisee if there ever was one. Shame on you, shame on your lifestyle. Titus 1.16 says that they confess to know God, but by their works, they're abominable and a reprobate. The Pharisees didn't say go and follow Jesus. The Pharisees didn't say deny yourself daily. The Pharisees didn't say repent. You need to get born again. Only one way to heaven. Only one way to heaven. Only one way to heaven. Only one way. Only one way to escape hell. Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus. Easter church isn't just one day a week, guys. 
Easter church isn't just one time a year. It's every day. Every day you better be serving God and keeping his commandments. Hebrews says that if they continue to sin, there remains no sacrifice. Revelation 2, 4 through 5 says that you have left your first love. Unless you repent, you will perish. Just because you are a Christian or claim to be a Christian doesn't mean you're still a Christian. Jesus says, whoever endures till the end shall be saved. Jesus is God, guys. Read and obey the Bible. What was, what, what was I saying? Jesus says, if you endure till the end, you have to endure till the end. You have to continue serving God. You have to continue keeping his commandments. And he commands us to deny ourselves. There's a lot of commandments in the Bible. He commands us to get born again and to serve him. He commands us to preach the truth. He commands us not to have sex before marriage or homosex. He commands us to live holy by following his word. What is your base line for your life? What is your, where do you get your stance in life? Do you make it, do you make it up with your thoughts and feeling? Are you emotional? You're emotionally driven? You just go with the flow based on your emotion? You think the truth is subjective to you? You think that everyone is just needs to live how you feel and your emotions are. You're emotional and you're headed to hell on your feelings. The Bible says you need to gain the mind of Christ. You need to deny yourself. Disney says follow your heart. Jesus says follow me. Jesus says go and sin no more. Jesus doesn't say, oh, try your best not to. It's all right if you continue to sin. It's all right if you continue to masturbate. It's all right if you continue to have... What's it called? Anyways, Jesus does not say for you to keep on sinning. He says, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more, guys. I didn't just go in your room last night and write it in your Bible. It's been there since before I was born. Jesus says, 1 Corinthians 15, 34, Awake to righteousness and do not sin. Yeah, look it up yourself. It's in your Bible. Trust me, I didn't just go in your room last night and put it in there. It's been there. You just haven't read it. You just haven't applied it. And if you did read it, you didn't read it with spiritual eyes. You need to read the Word of God with the Holy Spirit. You need to read the Word of God with the Spirit. Psalm says that they have ears, but they do not hear. They have eyes, but they do not see. They have throats, but they do not speak. You need to gain spiritual ears. I know you guys are looking for something spiritual. That's why so many people are in New Age occults. That's why so many people like to have sex before marriage, because they want something spiritual. But you need to gain the power of God. You need to have the Holy Spirit to gain true power. You want a good spiritual experience? If you want a good spiritual experience, don't obey Muhammad the pervert. Don't obey Muhammad the pedophile. Obey Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. If you want to have a good spiritual experience, You've got to serve the God of the Bible, Jesus Christ, the Word, the Holy Spirit. Guys, hate to break it to you guys, but I'm a true born again Christian. I love the truth and I hate evil. 
Do you hate evil? Do you, do you preach against evil? Or do you sleep with it? Most of you guys are sleeping with evil. You're sleeping with the Jezebel. You need to get born again. You need to know the God of the Bible. God is angry at the wicked every day. Where was the love when Jesus Christ destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah? God does not love your sin. And guess what? It's not going to be your sin that gets the punishment. Your sin isn't going to be the one getting the punishment. It's going to be you burning in hell. Your sin isn't going to be a burning in hell. It's going to be your soul. Jesus talked about hell a lot because he doesn't want you to go there. But if you choose to keep on disobeying him, God bless you. If you choose to keep on obeying Jesus Christ, you've got God's promise that you're going to burn in hellfire for eternity. God doesn't lie, guys. If God says that sinners go to hell, sinners go to hell. If, guys, God doesn't lie. If God says that homosexuals go to hell, then homosexuals go to hell. God doesn't lie, guys. If God says that liars go to hell, then liars go to hell. I used to be a liar, but I got born again. I let the blood of Jesus cleanse my lifestyle and my soul. I let the blood of Jesus Christ. I let the blood of Jesus Christ do its work. I let the Holy Spirit do its work. Are you still a liar? Are you still a fornicator? Are you still an idolater? Oh, I'm talking to you Catholics now. You Catholics out there, you commit idolatry if anyone did. You Catholics commit idolatry more than I did when I was a sinner. You bow down to Mary. Jesus says, this is what Jesus says in Matthew 6. Pray our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He doesn't say our, Ma our mother Mary which art in heaven. He doesn't say pray to Mary. He says pray our Father which art in heaven. He doesn't say to pray to the disciples. He doesn't say get a kneeling pad for your Mary statue. No more praying to Mary, guys. Why would you want to pray to Mary when you could pray to God anyways? Doesn't make any sense. Why would you want to pray to the disciples when you could pray to God himself? Why do you bow down to statues of Mary? It's because you're a child of the devil. You worship other things other than God. You don't put God first. Why do you worship the disciples? It's because you're a child of the devil and you have no light in you. Isaiah says, if you speak, if someone speaks not this truth, amen, God bless you, amen. If, you, if someone speaks any other truth than this, there's no light in him. No more praising Satan, guys. No more praising Muhammad, Buddha, Allah. No more praising your Hindu cow. Your Hindu cow is not gonna save you from hell. Your Hindu cow isn't gonna do you any good. Some of you guys pray to God, but God does not hear your prayers. Jesus says that God does not hear the prayers of sinners but those that do his will. In John 9, it says that God will not hear your prayers unless you do his will. Some of you guys pray to God at night and your prayer doesn't even go past this, uh, this wood right here. It doesn't even go past these lines. The Bible says that the prayers of the wicked are an abomination. God bless you. The Bible says that the prayers of the wicked are an abomination. Some of you guys pray to God, 
and your prayer doesn't even go past that sign. It doesn't even go past this sign. God does not hear the prayers of the wicked. Why are you even praying to God? Why do you think that God is going to hear your prayers when, when you've been disobeying Him this whole time? Why do you think that God is going to hear your prayers when you've been disobeying Him this whole time? Jesus says, if you're ashamed of me, I'm going to be ashamed of you. When you die, you're either going to hear, job well done, or depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. You guys don't know Jesus Christ one bit. Shame on you. Titus 1.16, they confess to know God, but by their works, they're abominable, they're a reprobate. You've got to know Jesus Christ, guys, to make it to heaven. You've got to know the God of the Bible, Jesus Christ. You've got to know His Word. Jesus says, until I come, give attention to reading doctrine. Till I come, give attention to reading, to doctrine, to studying. Obey Jesus, guys. Read the Bible and obey it. Guys, sinning is not fun. I know that your sin seems to be fun. But I'm here today to tell you that it leads to hellfire. Don't get drunk tonight, guys. Read the Bible tonight. Instead of watching Pornhub tonight, how about you open up that Bible? Instead of masturbating tonight, read and repent and get born again. You don't have to go on a mission trip to get born again, guys. You don't have to uh, spend a thousand dollars on a plane ticket to get born again. You can get born again right here, right now in your car. All you have to do is recognize your sin, re recognize that you've been doing wrong against God, repent and believe in the Word, repent and believe in Jesus Christ, the God of the Bible. And remember, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you're going to be led to believe in the whole Word, because the Word is God. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the King. He's the King. Jesus is the King. Every knee is going to bow down. Every tongue is going to confess His name. Doesn't matter if you're Christian or not. Doesn't matter if you're Buddhist, homosexual, Hindu. You're still going to bow down to Jesus Christ someday. And then after you're done bowing down to him, he's gonna, you're going to be sent to hell. You're going to bow down to Jesus someday.